All right, this topic is totally disassemble your impact, just in case you want to replace your O-ring, any parts, or do some maintenance on it, like if you want to clean it, re-lube it. All right, first, we want to the, make the gun safe so you can disassemble it without harming yourself. <laughs> All right, first, you unscrew the bottle. Usually, it takes about five turns, half turn, to get it start bleeding. It takes four or five seconds to totally bleed it, and the bottle will be loose, and your pressure will be zero. Remove the bottle. And let's say 99% of the time, you'll have pressure on your regulator side. To bleed that, the safer way to do it is adjusting the regular adjustment screw counterclockwise to see to hear it start bleeding. Don't fire it, all right? It'll cause damage. If it's low pressure, you might uh, unseat the valve from the rear, all right? We need this two and a half mil. Just slightly back it off, do you hear it? You want to verify the sound that it's not leaking anymore and zero pressure on your gauge. All right, now it's safe to uh, disassemble it. Now we're going to move the scope rail and cheek rest. Now your cheek rest, uh, the newer one is a one piece. You get the older one, come out in two pieces. All right, now we're going to remove the barrel. Yeah, the older one will come a, a thumb screw. Or these couple turns, just pull the barrel out. If you got telescoping barrel, just grab the stationary part, yank on it. All right, the main plate base here, we're going to remove next. And there's a bunch of screws here. It's, it's nice to have a little uh, electric drill here to get them all out. Do the top so you can see. Now as you see, I'm keeping the screws there. So I'm going to lift the whole plate as one horizontal unit to keep all the screws in place. So when you put it back in, it's less hassle. Just like that. Now the feeding block assembly. You just kind of lift up on the front, pull back a little bit, to clear the probe on the rear block, lift up the whole assembly. All right. Now I was going to uh, remove the valve, valve seat adjustment uh, knob here. Now you need a. Uh, I guess 11 mil. Now we're going to loosen the set screw for the rear block. You just want to loosen it for now. Just have a turn. What you do is the rear block assembly, you want to turn it counterclockwise. 
you want to unscrew the valve housing, thread it in from the red tube, the valve tube. Now here's the tricky part. We're going to remove the hammer rest here. If you don't, you cannot pull the whole valve rod from the rear. All right, we had to modify some uh, tools here to get it off. We got a vice grip, but it's modified. It's kind of half moon and smooth so it doesn't uh, gouge up the, the valve rod. We're gonna grab it from the rear. Usually you have a C3 bumper. You just wanna put it back, slide it down a little bit. And you gotta adjust it to get really tight. Not tight, tight, but enough so the rod doesn't uh, turn while you're moving the, unscrewing the hammer rest. What I do is uh, give your vice grip something to sit on so it doesn't gouge up the finish on your action. Let it rest like that. As you notice, this uh, valve rest is already loose. There's this common issue, this become, it gets loose, that's when you lose power. So if, if it wasn't loose, there's another modified tool, another vice grip. But, again, it's shaped like a half moon so it doesn't damage a piece. This hole like this, you gotta adjust it. Bear with me, it's kinda hard to do this, but Usually, I'll have the uh, action on a vise, it doesn't move. I mean, just enough pressure to turn the rest. And it screws off. Alright. Now, be careful with the spring, it wants to spring out. If you don't caution, it'll just fly out like that. But anyway, that's the whole valve assembly. And the, the older style, the spring comes in three pieces. The newer style, just one single spring. Here's your uh, valve tube. I'm going to remove that. It don't take much to uh, break it loose. Is the uh, well, there used to be quad rings in here, now I replace it with the fat O-ring, small O-ring. To get that out, it's usually just a little hex nut on there. It's an 8 mil. Let me do this without putting a vise for you. Here's your uh, O-ring retainer. You just get the O-ring out and replace it. The most important part is removing all the old grease just clean the o-ring surface really good before you put your o-ring in now we're going to move the trigger guard so we can move the regulator out Uh, trigger guard. Alright, we're going to remove the trigger base housing plate here so we can access the trigger assembly. Now it's in you get a tweezer or a little vice grip, you gotta remove just one pin to take the whole base out. Just that one pin holds the whole trigger base. Now we're gonna remove the regular adjustment screw.
fingernail will do to get it out. Your reg adjustment screw. Now your trigger, I mean, <laughs> your regular housing. Now you remove the adjustment screw, they expose a, a hex fitting in there that fits a, a 9 mil Allen. Now you're better off getting a set of ball Allen so you don't have to be dead center on the piece to get unscrew it off. Yeah, that's your regular body. Now we're going to remove the, the piston and the washer assembly inside the action. So we've got a little tool here, it just grabs it. And I just push on it, it removes the whole piston and washer assembly. Now, be careful, if you don't have the proper tool, some people uh, grab metal object at the tip of it and pull it, but be careful, there's an O-ring in this valve housing that actually sits one eighth of this piston that seals it. If you ruin that sealing surface, it's going to blow out your little bleed hole down the trigger. So be careful not to damage the sealing surface and your piston. And if you want more of this tool, just call FX USA. Now the only way to find out if you had the newer model or the older model, around uh, the base where the trigger guard goes, in between the threaded hole, there'll be a serial number here. That's indicating you had the newer, newer action that accept the longer piston rod. All right. If you don't, you have the older one. And you know you're going to have a short piston on this gun. Now this piece here, your bottle adapter. All right. It looks like this because you need to place your action on a vise, a sturdy vise, because this requires a lot of torque to get this piece off. Because it's loctited on and kind of torqued on. This is a kind of a safety thing because when you got the bottle in there, you want to remove it. You don't want this uh, adapter to unscrew from the action. That's why they loctite it on there. All right, there's another piece here, it's called a plug, a machining plug through the body. You need to remove that. And this, even though this O-ring is uh, stationary, it does fail. I, I replaced a lot of these. Sometimes it becomes like hard plastic. And there's another one on a, behind the bottle adapter. You can see it right here. This exact same screw is in there. So you remove the bottle adapter, you have access to this plug. There you go. The gun is totally dismantled. You can access all the major parts, do your cleaning, inspection, tune it the way you want it, to make it uh, perform good. All right, we'll catch you next video.